it takes away all of the muscle function of any distally innervated muscle group. The deep motor branch to review is called the posterior interosseous nerve. The clinical presentation is classic. Radially directed wrist extension. When the patient is unable to actively extend the wrist and or fingers and thumb, all of these extensor muscles remain in a stretched position for prolonged periods of time. Convert the radial palsy hand where only really interphalangeal joint extension and flexion is relatively normal. If you look at each of these illustrations, you will see that there's some dynamic component and therefore during active finger flexion what invariably happens is the patient pulls against the orthosis when extended the wrist cannot drop below neutral the intrinsic muscles will extend the interphalangeal joints and the weight of the hand is extending the metacarpal phalangeal joints the width we need in order to be halfway around the six inch diameter of the wrist. Well that's three inches so we would measure three inches and place our marks on the pattern and then I want to leave her alone and let it cool on her and now what I will do is I will mark exactly where this needs to bend so I'm going to hold it in the ideal position while I take a pencil and I specifically mark where the outrigger is. Here I have a scrap of thermoplastic material that I've thoroughly heated and I'm going to drape it over this distal crossbar. Mark exactly where the middle of each proximal phalanx is. The wrist is about neutral and she's fully extended because remember her intrinsic muscles are extending her fingers and she's now able to make a full fist.